Hello class, this video is a Photoshop tutorial on section A of project four. I'm going to show you guys how to put these three pages together using Photoshop. So that's the title, design statement, and then some product samples. So if you want, you can go ahead and load Photoshop. Now I reset my settings to default. So if you have the default settings, everything should look the same. Uh, what you want to do is create a new document. So file new. Um, if this defaults to pixels, you can switch this to inches and you want to type in the page size that you've been using for your sketches. So I'm assuming most of you have been using eight and a half by 11. If you've been doing 11 by 17, you can type in 17 for the width and 11 here. And again, you know, this is your orientation that should match as well. Um, but again, for me, it's eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to put that back in, switch the orientation to landscape. The resolution is how many pixels per inch you want your page to have. Uh, the more pixels per inch you have, the less pixelated it'll be, the like better print quality it'll have. So you want to be somewhere between 200 and 300. I'm going to change mine to 300. I'm going to leave this at RGB um, and leave the background at white and just hit create. So if your layout is different than mine and you want to have it be aligned, you could go to file or sorry, edit preferences general. If you click this reset preferences on quit, hit OK and then restart Photoshop, your layout should match mine. A quick reminder on what we're looking at here. Uh, here's your layers tab. This is um, basically where you have like all of your pages. You can think of it as like a stack of pages. So if I click this here, I create a new layer. Um, and this is how you keep your images organized. Uh, over here, of course, are all the different tools. And then this little icon here, if you click on it, this is your history where you can undo things. So if I take a brush tool here, scribble a little bit, you can see it added a new command of brush tool. You can also see that it's on this layer. If I want to go back to what the file looked like when I opened it, I can just click back here and it undoes those last two commands. I did. All right. Um, so first of all, I'm going to just save this, even though there's no work in here yet. Save it to my desktop. I'm going to name it Section A for Project 4. Now the first part of Section A is a title. So I'm going to create a new layer, grab this type tool, it's the one with a T here, and I can click and drag a box where I want to type in my title. So my project is Dental Floss. If you want to come up with a brand or a name, you can, but you don't need to. Um, you can see it's like off to the left here. If I highlight it, I can center it within this text box. If I go up here, I can change the fonts to whatever I might want to use. Uh, I tend to be boring and default to Helvetica as it's just kind of a safe universal uh, font. See, we'll go with um, black since it's a title. And then of course we can change the font size here. Uh, and now you'll notice these like pink alignment um, sort of like automatic rulers. If I drag it Again, if these should be on by default, so you can kind of drag it around and this will tell me when it's centered on the page. Maybe I want it just a bit above center. Um, and really that's all you need for the title. I'll make it this a little bit bigger. If you wanted, you know, you could put my name in here, the date maybe. For this, I'll take slightly smaller text and go with Roman, if I can find it. There it is. You 
you know, or the due date or something. If you can't find a font that you like, I want to show you guys a website. It's called dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Um, now, they break down different fonts over here. You can just go for like a basic sans serif, which means no little serifs on the end of your font, your, your characters. So like a Times New Roman is a serif font, Arial is a sans serif. Um, and now if you go to click more, op show more options here, you can click on public domain, 100% free, free for personal use, um, sort by popularity or whatever you want, name, newest, let's go newest and click submit. And now it should only return things that are free to use. And I, you can type in here whatever you want your title to be. So now it's going to show me what dental floss looks like in all of these fonts. You can download the file. It'll download a zip and install it. Uh, so if you want a custom font for your presentation, you can do that. Not necessary, just kind of a fun thing to show you guys. Um, so once you have that set up, I like to keep my uh, layers organized here. So we're creating three pages. So here's, even though this is only one layer for my title page, you know, I could put like a photo in there or something, but I'm just going to keep mine simple. If you click the little folder, which is to the left of the create new layer, it says create new group. And basically, um, if you just drag that layer into there, I now have a new folder that has my title in there. Um, this will make more sense for the other steps of the process. All right, so then the next page I want to create is my design statement. So I'm going to hide this by clicking the eyeball. I'm going to click a new layer. I'm going to take my type tool again. I'm going to drag a big box this time. And my design statement is you want to talk about what you're designing and who it's for. So in my instance, uh, dental floss for kids. And then if you kind of have a goal, so maybe it's uh, to make flossing fun. It could literally be that simple. Again, here it's a bit big, so I'm going to just take, go back to Roman. Maybe just a little bit bigger. I don't know. I'm fussing. It doesn't matter. Um, and then... Again, using my quick guides to align this, drag this down. Now, it might be a good idea to drop in a photo of your user. So I'm just going to go to Google and type in kid flossing, and we'll see what comes up. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, so when you're searching for an image in Google, you can always click on Tools, Size, and Large, and this should return images that won't be as pixelated. Um, again, more uh, dots per inch. Um, kind of want to watch this video now. Anyway, I'm <laughs> going to grab this one. So there's two ways you can grab an image. You can, oh, although that's looking pixelated. There's like bad quality in here. Anytime you kind of see this like fuzzy pixelation, try and avoid those images. Um, let's look at this one. There you go. That's pretty good. So I could either right click, save as, and I could just save this to my desktop. Uh, for what it's worth, um, you know, especially if you're like publishing something, or if you're working somewhere, you may want to change the usage rights to labeled for reuse so that you're, it's, you're not using something that's licensed. The ownership doesn't belong to someone else. Um, but obviously, this limits what shows up. Let's go see if we go to any size, if there's anything better. But honestly, for this project, uh, you don't have to worry about licensing. So I said that's my desktop. You could also copy and paste, uh, but sometimes this gives you slightly higher quality. Uh, Control A or Command A to select all. 
and then Control C or Command C to copy, and then Control C or Command V to paste. And I'm just going to drop this over here. And now, same thing, click to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Design Statement. Drag this up. And now there's my design statement. Now the last page of this project A requirement or section A requirement is uh, product samples. So this is a very similar process. I'm just going to go change this to back to change the licensing back to anything. And I'm just going to type in floss, see what comes up. So ideally here I'm looking for, um, you know, different product samples that might inspire me for different ideas. So it might be a good idea to do this before you get fully into your 10 concepts, because this may give you ideas of like what you can redesign, different and interesting shapes. Um, so, and then same thing too, in terms of size. So if I go to tools, size, large, I should get better quality images. Um, this is kind of an interesting photo and, you know, an interesting shape. So again, I could save this image or I could just go copy and then control V or command V to paste. Uh, back to here. It's kind of an interesting, kind of a clear container. Paste this. Um, what I'm looking for is at least six samples. Uh, for you guys to show here. So now maybe I want something like a little more unique in shape as I scroll down, see if anything pops up. Like here you go, that's pretty interesting where they have the spool here. So that's the unique shape. I'll right click copy, paste it in here. Of course, you know, there's like some of these like different uh, types of, of floss utensils. So that could be some, some inspiration as well. So maybe something like this, like that's kind of a unique shape. And right now I'm just dropping things in. I'll resize them later rearrange them later. Grab this one. Now, a good sign is that all these images are coming in big. Let's just hypothetically say, or here, I'll give an example. So if I'm not searching for large images, if I go for any size, And let's say I want actually that's a nice big size too. I'll grab this one. If you hover over, it tells you the size that these numbers in the bottom left corner, that's the pixels. So anything like 1000 pixels or bigger is good. Um, but here, there's a pretty small package, small image. So when you drop it in, see how small it is on the page. If I try and scale this up, you can see the percentage of what I'm scaling it up here. Anything more than 200%, it's going to start to lose. I mean, any scaling up, it's going to lose image quality, but anything more than 200 is going to get pretty bad. Um, it might be okay when I print it. This image seems like pretty decent quality, but try to avoid doing that if you can. Um, you don't want pixelated images on your samples here. So now I have my six images. Uh, when you want to arrange it, um, Let's see, if you go to view show, there's grid, which can help you arrange things. Um, so you'll notice that, okay, so when I'm on my moving selector tool here, there's a box up here that's checked that says auto select. That means when I click on a layer, it'll automatically move it. If I uncheck that, no matter where I click, it's going to move whatever layer I'm highlighted on here, and I have to click through. I think there's a hotkey, though. Yeah, it's Control. 
Control turns this on, or Command, I would imagine, on a Mac. So just check that for your settings. Um, but the grid helps arrange things. Um, if you do Control T or Command T, it brings up, or it's also under uh, Edit Transform and Scale. It brings up these uh, boxes around your image that you can drag your image size. Now just be sure that when you do that, you hold down Shift so that you don't distort the image and you keep its proportions the same. Um, but actually, before you start doing that, it's a good idea, especially if you haven't been saving the images, if you just copy and paste it from Google like I did, it's a good idea to uh, make a new folder. I call it raw images, meaning to say unedited. Select all these photos I put in here. So I click on the top one, I scroll down, holding down shift, I click on the bottom one. That's how I select multiple of them. And I'm going to hold down alt on my PC, or I think it's option on a Mac. And if I click and drag this into the raw images folder, I just made copies of all the images. That way, if I end up scaling something too far down, um, I can go and pull the original nice large image out of that folder as I need. So I'm going to start to arrange these. Now, if you have white boxes like this blocking an image, you can always, when you're on the layer, if you go here and set it to multiply, it'll make that white kind of transparent and disappear. Um, so I'm going to do that for that image. It really doesn't hurt to do it on all the images with white on them. You can also hide images as you're working on this as needed. So let's see, scale this down. I'm going to leave about a, oh, I have a lot more space here. Um, to zoom out, I hit control, or sorry, let's see, control spacebar and then alt. So maybe it's command spacebar option on a Mac. Um, should help you zoom out. Now I'm realizing that I had a lot more space than I thought. So maybe I will try and grab a couple more images here. You can always edit some of the images by, you know, you can kind of delete some of this gray away. If I want to get rid of this logo that's in this bottom corner, I can get rid of that. If you have a selection, you can always hit Control D or Command D to get out of that selection. So here's a good example where I want this raw image again, because I scaled this down too small. So I'm going to go up here to my raw images, find the one that I want, which is this one, click on it, hold down Alt or Option, and drag it, and then turn that off. So now I have this nice big image again. And you know, just kind of arrange them nicely. Doesn't matter too much how you do it. I try and give, if I have like colored boxes, I try and give even spacing between them. And again, I can kind of delete some of this away. Of course, now though, I'm blocking some of my samples here.
And there we go. Um, let's see, control and quotation marks, or command and quotation marks, turned off that grid. So here's my sample page. Uh, it's really that simple, maybe a little more fussy than I needed to be. Um, but now, since because this has multiple layers, this is where it's good now, why we need a folder. So again, click on this folder icon, type in samples, click on all of these, and put them in there. And there you have it. I can uh, now print all of these one at a time and drop these into my presentation. Um, if I really wanted, I could put my name. I could have kind of a... You can also click for text. You don't have to drag a box if you don't want to. Uh, you don't have to put a title block on these. Um, but if you want, you can. Same thing, you can do it with the type tool. I would just make the size small so it's not distracting. Drop it in this corner. And now if I leave it on outside of these folders and just leave the eyeball turned on, it'll it'll be in all of my pages. All right, let me know if you have any questions.